from the official Batavia Mark Dogs post game studios. This is the official Batavia Mark Dogs post game show. Straight ahead, you'll hear interviews, reaction, instant analysis, scores around the league, highlights of the game, and so much more covering your Batavia Mark Dogs. John Cruz is the host, and the Mark Dogs post game show starts right now. How you doing, Batavia? A huge win tonight for your Batavia Muck Dogs. And what a game that was. 10 to 7, they defeat the Syracuse Sawcats. Good evening, everybody. I'm John Karuba. Going to take you through this one. And in addition, going to get you set up for the interviews and the highlights. And this was just a good old fashioned offensive shootout. At first, Batavia looked like they were just going to run away and hide, having a nine run lead at one point. However, Syracuse, to their credit, they were determined not to go home on a three-hour bus ride without at least putting up some sort of fight. They came back with six unanswered runs to cut it to a 9-6 game. They followed that up. It's Batavia who's able to get the insurance run and eventually able to close it out with a 10-7 victory tonight over Syracuse. And they remain undefeated at Dwyer Stadium. They have been incredible there. So far to start the season, still undefeated at home. Let's listen to the highlights of the game proudly presented to you by the Batavia Buck Dogs Baseball Network. Nap ready to go. And here comes the 3-2 on its way. And that is off the plate, down and outside low. That's going to be an RBI walk for Torres. And in the bottom of the first, Batavia strikes first. It's your Muck Dogs one, and the visiting Salt Caps no score. Back, ready to go, get three, two, one, four, runner box. Downstairs and inside at the shoelaces, and you could see Nap wanted the call, but didn't get it. And it's the second consecutive block with the bases loaded. That's going to be an arm down from Porto after the earliest bat of the year of Canada. Bottom of the first, the table double fielding for 2 nothing over Syracuse. 3-2 swung on Tribbett, and a nice back here by the second base to throw to first, not in time, could not handle it as two runs come home to score. A great effort by the second baseman, Zesma, but he couldn't handle it. Once that throw got away, one of the runners were off on that 3-2 pitch. Once they're off to the race, it's one that couldn't be handled. Two more runs racing the score, and it's now four or nothing to Tavia in the bottom of the first. Quick swung on, and that is just a back up the middle into center field base head. Are they going to send Ward to the plate? Yes, they are. As the throw comes in their second baseman, does not make the throw home. Scoring was out of play. Standing up is Liam Ward. And that is an army I single second of the day for Alex Torres. Bottom of the third, Batavia. Jump up and down. Your Muck Dogs now 5 nothing over Syracuse. Good no. swung on. That should get a run home. Cracked in the air to straightaway center. Tagging from third, Torres. They're going to send him home. And he will score. The throw comes into short. So that is going to be a sack fly and another RBI for Dobson, number three on the sack fly. And at the bottom of the third, the team to blowing it open, folks. Buck Dodge six, Syracuse with a goose egg. Pitch up and inside, another bases loaded walk for an RBI. So trotting in the score is Corso. Meanwhile, the other runners moving up. That's Rodriguez, Young, and Bacon is on first with an RBI walk. Seven, nothing to Timmy in the bottom of third. This is turning into a rout, folks. It's a 2-1, gets away from the catcher. Goes to the backstop. Another run comes in to score. As that is Caleb Rodriguez, and Batavia hits the eight mark. The other two runners move up to second and third. It's still only one out. It'll be a 1-0 on its way. Here comes the pitch. Swung on, and that is laced. And the second baseman right there. Zez going to make the catch as the runner tag for third and scored. How about that? 
On a very shallow pop to the infield, they still get another run home. That's going to be a sack fly, and now it's 9-0 Batavia. And I got to tell you, Syracuse kind of looked like maybe they were sleeping on that play. And that pitch down and away, it's low. He walks in a run, and at the top of the fifth, it's now 9-1 Batavia. Syracuse is on the board. The shutout is gone. Getting the sign. Here comes the payoff. Off the plate, high and away. That was borderline. Everybody wanted it. Not going to get it. Another RBI walk, and it's now 9-2. And I think Skip has seen enough of Barry. I think we're going to get a pitching change here. Next pitch swung on. Hit on the ground a second. Then he'll get a run home. Throw to first in time. Chesney scores standing up. That's the second out, but if you're Batavia, you'll trade that run for the out. And as we are here in the top of the six, our score, Batavia nine, Syracuse three. The one, two swung on. That'll get a run home ground ball. So it's booted! Couldn't handle it. A run scores. So a run comes across. Safe at first is Jones. And moving up to third on that was Schlegel. So the second defensive miscue by Batavia in this inning, and it's now a 9-4 game. Runners on the course, one out. They really are making the charge in this one now. Here comes the next pitch. Swung on, slow ground ball, third base. Going to be a tough play. Throw to first, it's made. Another run comes across the score, but that is a fine play by Bevel, the third baseman, to get the second out. This could get him out of the GM, though. Ground ball second. No! Couldn't handle it! And that's going to squirt into right center. Another run comes to the plate for Syracuse. And in the top of the seventh, now it's 9-6. And it's really getting interesting. Batavia is self-destructing here in the top of the seventh. More decky setting at the belt. Oh, one that swung on, drilled to the gap. Left center, that gets down. That's going to go to the track. So Ward is going to score easily standing up and on his way to second with a well-earned RBI double is Corso. That is just a gigantic hit in the bottom of the seventh. Batavia makes Syracuse pay for their poor defense. Batavia 10, Syracuse 6. So two down, runner on third. Pitch is swung on, hit on the ground, third. Backhand, let's see if they can make the play. No, they can't. That's going to allow a run to score. And so it is going to be an RBI and what I would imagine to be a base hit. But it's an RBI in Syracuse once again. They're not going away. It's 10-7 now. So it's up to Bailey Martin to keep this game going for Syracuse. Next pitch swung on. This could do it. High top fly. Shallow center. Who's got it? It's the shortstop who's got it, Rodriguez. And ladies and gentlemen, there's your game. And once more, Batavia delivers their home crowd a victory. And in this out of league game, again, your final score. One more time. Mush Dogs 10 and the Salt Cat 7. What a game, though. And as always, those game highlights presented to you by the Batavia Muck Dogs Baseball Network. That was quite a game, winning 10-7 over Syracuse. Both teams clawed and fought back in that game. Truly entertaining from start to finish. So what did the players and Skip have to say about it? Well, let's find out right now on this tour of the Muck Dogs locker room. Again, as always, proudly presented to you by the Batavia Muck Dogs Baseball Network. So sitting here with Coach Martinez following his team's 10-7 thrilling win over Syracuse in the out of league game. And Coach, start with getting some thoughts on the game overall. What a crazy back and forth roller coaster ride that was. Yeah, you know, we um had some mental lapses there in the middle of the game. Um and and it happens, obviously, you know what I mean, when it, when uh, I think they lose focus a little bit. But, you know, we, we got to clean that stuff up. We'll be all right. They, they still won the game, so, you know, they did their job. Now, as far as at the beginning of the game, you certainly didn't have any mental lapses. You guys jump out to that 9 nothing lead. 
What do you say about your team that you think, as far as offensively, allowed them to get off to that big start? Uh, I played discipline, you know. They, they were struggling throwing strikes, and we weren't helping them. And that's huge when uh, when the team is going to you know help you out there. you got to take advantage of that. Tyler Henshaw, first three innings, he was just really good. He was flat out dominant, really not giving them a lot. What did you think of his performance tonight? I mean, that crafty, that crafty lefty, man, that's what we expect from him. That's what we think we're going to get from him. And uh, he did exactly what we thought he was going to do. He was dominant. And uh, that's good looking for the rest of the season. And we can give us that every time he gets out there. Now, as you're going through the middle of the game and it starts to get tighter, what are, what are you saying to your guys, just as the manager, what are you telling your guys as that game is starting to go from 9 nothing to 9-4, they're closing it? Yeah. No, it's just, you know, tighten up, focus a little bit more, um, you know, clean up the defensive stuff. You know, little, little, just little mental lapses when, you, when you're up. I think you got, they get a little too, uh, too uh, complacent, and we got to fix the complacency. We got to focus throughout the rest of the whole the nine innings, you know, from top to bottom. And a uh, final thing, Coach, um, to be able to get this one. I know it was an out-of-league game, but, I mean, you guys just continue to do it at home. I mean, it's really probably, I mean, one of the big goals was establishing the home field advantage, and by continuing to pile up the Ws, you keep doing that. As a manager, how good does that feel when you see how well your team plays at home? I mean, you know, anytime you can have a home field advantage, um, it's a big deal. We're just protecting our house, and, and that's good to know that we feel – if we're home, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna we have a shot of winning and, and, and defending our, our territory and as we should. So it's kinda of normal stuff and, and that's what we expect. It's an expectation. So I mean the, the guys are coming through. Coach, thank you very much for your time and uh congrats on the win. Thank you for your time, John. I appreciate you. Go dogs. Here with Tyler Henshaw, the starting pitcher for the Mutt Dogs tonight and the first three innings. Tyler, you were outstanding tonight. Um what what really led to your dominance and being so effective on the mound? Well, I was just letting them hit the ball. Uh, I knew our defense was going to make all the plays, so I was just trying to make all my pitches and uh, just let our defense do what they got to do. And then, obviously, you're on the mound in support of this offense that, especially here, continues to put up big numbers, jump out to the 9 nothing lead. Uh, as a pitcher, what's going through your mind when you're watching your offense work like that? Uh, it gives you a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, with an offense like our guys, uh, you know you're always going to get support. Um, it helps a lot uh, mentally. So uh, you just got to trust everything and uh, keep pitching. And then as far as, you know, you're at home, you, you got the big lead, you, you pitched the three innings. Like, how do you not allow yourself to maybe fall into a wall? You know, you still continue to attack. Like, what goes into the mindset to make sure that you're still sharp even after some big innings? Yeah, you just got to keep going. Uh, no matter what the score is, whether it's 0-0, zero, zero, one nothing, or 9 nothing, you just got to keep making your pitches and uh, can't ever uh, give in. And you guys continue to win here at home. Now six straight wins to open the season here at Dwyer Stadium. How important do you think it is, and why do you think this team plays so well when they play here in front of the crowd? Well, we got the best fans in the league. Uh, they come out every night. Uh, it helps us a lot. Uh, it gives us a lot of motivation, and uh, it's just awesome playing in front of these great fans. And as far as the pitching staff goes, you know, in the very beginning of the season, it was really the offense that started to carry. But lately, you guys have been really good on the mound. And um, how does it feel like? Do you guys feed off each other now that the rotation's starting to uh, get into form here? Yeah, we absolutely do. Uh, our staff is pretty legit. Uh, every guy goes out there and competes. Uh, there's not a single guy who doesn't compete out there. Uh, Every one of us, you know, the coach trusts all of us, and uh, we just got to keep doing what we do. And uh, so finally, you know, you guys are going to be going back on the road now for a few games. What do you think the keys for this team are going to be? Take the way you play at home and now carry it out over on the road. Yeah, we just got to keep the energy going. Uh, we know our team's better. Um, we got a great squad here. Um, we got a lot of guys who are all good. Uh, just got to keep the energy going and uh, keep winning some games. All right, Tyler, thank you very much for the time. Congrats on the win tonight. Again, you were terrific. Thank you. Here with Kenny Dodson after a big win, 10-7 at home against Syracuse. And, Kenny, you stepped up to the plate in a couple big spots tonight, and you were able to drive some runs home. And uh, what's going through your mind in those at-bats, especially when you came up with the bases loaded, a chance to give your team an add-on? You're up 2 nothing, but your hit made it 4 nothing. Like, what are you telling yourself in that situation? 
Uh, honestly, when I'm in the box, uh, I got a clear head. Uh, I'm never making any situation, no matter what it is, uh, anything bigger than uh, what I need to make it. And uh, I'm honestly just thinking, stay simple and just be me. So obviously you were right in the middle. You had a couple RBIs and then the sack fly later. But, I mean, you were in the middle of that offensive onslaught to start the game, going up 9 nothing. And when you see the rest of your lineup hitting like that and you're a part of it, um, what's it like to watch and um, just observe seeing your offense click like that? Uh, you know, when one guy gets a rally like that going and you get the next guy doing the same thing and everyone's just kind of adding on to each other's success, uh, it's really infectious among our lineup. And we got a bunch of good guys, a bunch of great hitters in there. And uh, being, being able to add to that uh, offensive, uh, you know, that tally on in the early innings was uh, really big, and it was uh, great for me to add on to that too. Tyler Henshaw obviously started the game tonight for you guys, and in three innings he was really good. Uh, what did you think of his performance tonight? Uh, Henshaw was great for us. Uh, he's going to be a dog for us all season. Uh, it's great for him to come out after the, all this work, all these pitchers do their work uh, so much during the week, and uh, to be able to go on the mound and uh, prompt a performance like him, it's, uh, it's great for us. And, you know, you guys have been winning games a lot of different ways. Obviously, at the start, it was mainly your offense. But now the pitching has also really carried you guys, helped you through some. And, um, you know, to win in different ways and see that pitching staff and the offense work together, like what's going through my watching all of that come together as a team? Uh, it's great for us. Uh, some days we might have our uh, might have our hitters going a little more than our pitchers and uh, vice versa. We have the pitchers going more than the hitters. But uh, to see it all come together in one game, it's going to be big for us going down the season and uh, going later on to the you know June and July games. And uh, we want to see that happening more for us uh, in the future. So you guys now have won, even though tonight was an out-of-league game, counting that you guys have won six in a row here at Dwyer Stadium to open the season. You're undefeated here. Um, how big do you think that is, and how, why do you think this team feeds off playing here so well? Uh, it's, also, it's always awesome to play in front of the home crowd, you know. Uh, we got a bunch of great fans. Uh, all the kids love it, and uh, we're, all about the, we're all about the fans and kids here because it's a big family environment. And, uh, you know, playing in front of the home stadium, it's uh, always a great time, and I uh, want to keep doing great for them. And uh, you guys are going to be going out on the road now for a few games after an off day tomorrow. Um, what do you think some of the keys are going to be to having this team take the success they have at home and carry it out on the road? Oh, uh, well, going out on the road, uh, we got to stay with us. Uh, we got to stay with our dugout, and uh, we got to keep up the energy throughout the entire game. Uh, there's always no little things, only important things during those games, especially away. And uh, we got to keep doing the right things, uh, no matter what kind of situation it is, no matter how up or down or how up or down we are. Uh, we always got to be doing the right thing in the field. Well, Kenny, thank you very much for the time, and um, congrats on the win, and go Mock Dogs. Thank you so much. Here with Nolan Sparks. Again, he has been incredible to start this season, just been absolutely dominant on the mound. And, um, Nolan, you know, you guys are on a roll. You're on a roll on the mound. And um, what are some of the biggest keys you think to the success that you're having on the mound to start the season? Um. Uh, the biggest keys to my success go into preparation. Um, the day that you start, it's basically that 10% physical that everyone tells you baseball is about. It's 90% mental, 10% physical. So you got to use that 90% mental. You got to prepare from the day after your previous start to then 30 minutes before you actually start the next week. Um, so it goes into a lot of recovery, throwing, and just practicing what you know how to do because at this level you should know how to pitch um you shouldn't be trying to make any big changes because if you're at this level you know that you're good and you just gotta trust that so uh, i've been preparing as much as i can to just trust myself trust my stuff and uh, i follow my same preparation before every start and then i just go out there and do what i know how to do and it turned out to be the performance on, I believe, Thursday. And, you know, this team has played so well here at Dwyer Steam. 6-0, and even though tonight was an out-of-league game. You're undefeated here. But, you know, in your some of your best starts this season, they've been on the road. You really haven't so much been able to feed off the energy of the home crowd. How have you still been able to, to bring it as well as you have, even though they've been on the road and it's in a hostile environment? Um, well... You got to make the hostile environment your environment. You got to show up to their field and say, I don't care if I'm on your turf or whatever. I own this field. I'm going to own this mound and I'm going to own this game. And um, it's it's great to have a home crowd. And I look forward to 
uh, a home start here at Dwyer. But um, the road games, they're just as valuable as a home game. Um, while we do have to protect our field, and we have done so far, um, you got to go up to other people's field and claim it as yours. If you claim fields and claim teams and claim those wins, that's how you're going to make it to the playoffs. And, you know, how good – Getting to tonight's game, how good was Tyler on the mound tonight? Uh, Henny was great. Um, he didn't give up any hits. I believe he walked one guy and three shutout innings, and that's what you want from a starter, uh, just to go out there, put up some zeros to start us off in the game and give us a chance to win those early innings because those early innings can be huge towards the end of the game. So you guys, um, you're 6-2. and two. Obviously, tonight's game was an out of league, but – you get that good feeling. Now you're going on the road. Now, you've already discussed some of the keys as far as pitching on the road for yourself. What do you think it's going to take for this team to take what they've been able to do here at Dwyer and carry it on as you guys now go on the road for a little bit of an extended stretch? Um, so for this extended stretch, what you got to do is you got to stay locked in because uh, there's long bus trips. Got to get on the bus. Knees get a little tight. You got to come out of that bus ready to go, ready to play. Um, you got to get all your stretching in. You got to be fully prepared because you got to sit in that nine inning game, which is a long time, uh, that two and a half, three hours, and you got to stay focused no matter what because you got to be ready for anything to happen. You got to be ready to go into the game and pitch. You got to be ready to hit. You got to be ready for the ball to hit, hit to you. Last thing, Nolan, you know, to be recognized for what you've done in the PGCBL and um, get that award, that honor. Congratulations. But at the same time, what is that? I know you're probably more focused on the team goal, but uh, what does that mean um, to be recognized for the way that you've pitched over your first couple starts? Um, it's great to be recognized, um, but at the same time, uh, got to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, those recognitions happen because I didn't worry about it. I don't not I don't go out there to pitch and worry about getting recognized by the league. I go out there to pitch the best I can, and hopefully, it's just um, one of many. And um, just uh, how good was the offense tonight? I mean, put up 10 runs. Uh, offense was great. Um, we did have a little dry spot in the middle of the game, and then we kind of locked back in towards the end, had put together some better at-bats. Um, but the start of the game, we really challenged that pitcher, made him get deep in the counts, uh, got some walks, and then got some timely hits in order to score those runs. And on that note, Nolan, thank you very much for the time. Congrats on the win. I'll let you go. But again, congrats on the win and your great start to the season. Thank you. Listening to those interviews, you can tell there is something special brewing with this Muck Talks team this year, especially at Dwyer Stadium. And those interviews certainly prove that. And once again, proudly brought to you by the Batavia Muck Dogs Baseball Network. Before we wrap things up, we just want to give you a tour around the league on this Monday evening for the PGCBL. It was Jamestown thrumping Niagara 6-0, Utica over Watertown 7-6. Watertown will be here next Wednesday for a double header from Dwyer Stadium. Amsterdam beating Albany by a final count of 8-1. It was Glens Falls over Boonville by a final of 8-4 and Oneonta defeating the Auburn Double Days by a final count of 4-1. to one. So that is going to wrap it up for now. Our next broadcast is going to be coming your way Wednesday night as the Batavia Muck Dogs host not one but two teams. That's right, a double header on tap against the Watertown Rapids. Coverage will start around 5 o'clock for Game 1 at 7 o'clock for Game Number 2. Now, for all of us here from Dwyer Stadium, this is John Cooper. Thank you for tuning in tonight. One more time, your final score it was the Batavia Muck Dogs getting a big victory by a 10 7 count over the Syracuse Sawcats. And you listen to it right here on the Batavia Muck Dogs Baseball Network. John Cooper saying thank you for tuning in again. Your final count, Batavia 10, Syracuse 7. Thank you for listening to today's presentation of Batavia Muck Dogs Baseball and this edition of the Batavia Muck Dogs Post Game Show. Tune in to the next exciting telecast to catch everything exciting with your Muck Dogs on the Batavia Muck Dogs Baseball Network.